Chicago and the Philippines. A comprehensive review of the week's special community events, featuring many exciting personalities handled by the most professional Chicago Philippine Reports TV staff. Good afternoon and welcome to the Chicago Philippine Reports TV, still the number one Filipino show in the Midwest. I'm Gurley Pascual. Welcome to our show. Today we have all the top stories from the Philippines. We also have what's happening in our own Filipino-American community of Chicago. We have interesting interviews led by our very own executive producer, Miss Veronica Layton. We have Bridget Cotero Carino. All these are coming up and more afterward from our sponsors. Please stay with us. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 901-245-4874. That's 901-245-4874. 901-245-4874. That's 901-245-4874. While the House Committee on Banks and Financial Intermediaries deliberated on House Bill 6398, which creates the Maharlika Wealth Fund, Vice Chair Joe Wiesel said they revealed where the idea of the fund came from. Kailangan namin ng tulong. Utos ng Pangulo to. The president's cousin, Speaker Martin Romualdez, and eldest son, Senior Deputy Majority Leader Sandro Marcos, are among the authors of the measure, which was filed just last Monday and had been heard twice by the committee just this week. Salceda and Marikina 2nd District Representative Stella Kimbo expressed discomfort over a part of the bill, barring lower courts from stopping the fund's investments, leaving that power to only the Supreme Court or Court of Appeals. I know it. Eh. <laughs> Para tayong ano, may tatago. Yan na naman chismis eh. Marcos Wealth Dow will be re-injected by participation in Maharlika. Yan yung ano, Marites. House Deputy Minority Leader Franz Castro flagged the bill for designating the President as Chairman of the Maharlika Board, citing that the other wealth funds managed by governments failed, like in the case of Malaysia, whose Prime Minister Najib Razak fell from power and was jailed after it was exposed that funds from Malaysia's 1MDB were funneled into his cronies. Na dahil kayo din po, um, GM, nag-decide na ilagak itong fondo natin dito. So yun din po yung ating sana makapaglagay tayo dito ng penalty clause kung sakaling magkapalpak ito dahil alam naman natin yung mga karanasan po dyan sa Malaysia. Although sa Malaysia, napanagot yung prime minister at saka yung asawa niya. Castro also questioned the wisdom of government firms investing when it is heavily indebted and struggling to provide funds for regular benefits and assistance. Under the bill, the proposed Maharlika Fund will supposedly get its seed money from the GSIS, SSS, Land Bank, TBP, Banco Central, and even the national budget. For Salceda, it's an opportunity for Filipinos to grow their money. With a guarantee from government, these funds will be protected. But Castro challenged this, adding that the funds could be used for other immediate needs. Kung ito'y kumita ng mas malaki kaysa 7.7 o sa 14%, so mas makikinabang po ang GSIS members dahil mas lalago ang pera niya, pero yung kapital na ilalagak niya sa MWF ay, si, ay sinisiguro po ng national government. Saan pong kukuhani ng gobyerno itong panggaranti na to? Eh, meron na tayong 13, 13 trillion na debt. Tapos ang mga mamaya natin, ang hihingi ng mga ayuda, etc. Foreign investors are watching the fund's development with keen interest. We are following it uh, with great interest, but there's very few details uh, on the table right now. So uh, for now, we are, we are monitoring the situation. Other countries are doing this, and it seems to have been successful, but I just don't know 
unnecessary it is in the Philippines. The panel already approved the measure in principle along with the amendments and is now being routed to the Appropriations and Ways and Means Committees for further review. The panel will also set a public consultation. Most Asian markets jumped on Thursday as investors cheered signals from Fed Chairman Jerome Powell that a slowdown in rate hikes could come as soon as this month. He did, however, say the adjustments are just beginning. Philippine shares, though, returned to trade after the holiday with a pullback possibly unprofit-taking. The PSE index fell nearly three-quarters of 1% to close at 67.34. First Metro Securities Rice Aguilar says this is actually a healthy pullback. It makes sense that the market pulled back today. It's actually healthy. Right. Because if a, if a certain stock, if a certain market has rallied quite too high, the correction can be quite too steep also. In corporate stories, DMCI reports an 8% slowdown in its nine-month order book, coming in at just 45.3 billion pesos, citing slower bidding and contract awarding in both public and private sectors. The Kunsunhi-led contractor says it expects more formidable headwinds over the medium term on elevated inflation, rising rates, and anemic demand for commercial and office spaces. It hopes public infrastructure projects could provide some upside. DMCI bag package 102 of the Metro Manila subway project located in Muntin Lupa. Nine-month net income was flat at 796 million pesos. In other news, ASEN says it will complete the acquisition of Sinokalan Solar Power, the developer of the 60-megawatt peak solar plant in Pangasinan, by December 15. The Ayala Group's energy arms signed an agreement with SunGrow Power and Havila, AAA Holdings, on November 29. And finally, Century Properties Group is opening Novotel Suites Manila at Aqua in Mandaluyong City on December 15, betting big on the tourism boom during the holidays. This is the Antonio family's first foray into hospitality. The 152-room hotel, conceptualized in partnership with global hotel player Accor, is located in the sixth and last tower of Aqua Private Residences. On top of leisure stays, the group is also hoping to benefit from the increased presence of multinational companies in Makati and Taguig for meetings and gatherings. The government expects tourism to return to at least 90% of pre-pandemic levels by 2024 at the latest. The country saw 2 million visitor arrivals this year since border restrictions were eased in February. Via Times, vital news, vibrant views for the Filipino-Asian communities in Chicago. Via Times, for your most interesting and exciting reading and your party coverages. Via Times has very interesting columnists. You name it, Via Times has it. Law, Filipino news, dentistry, immigration, humor, serious opinions, health, beauty, mysticism, bata corner, showbiz, and intelligent written editorials. Call Via Times at 773-866-0811. Magandang hapo po sa inyo lahat and welcome to Veronica's segment of the show. Today, I have a very interesting person, a Filipino-American who lives in South LuPage. And uh, uh, help me welcome Ms. Uh, Joy Ranchero. And uh, welcome to our show, Joy. Um, Thank and, uh, you. Thank okay. you for having me. And Joy, Ms. Joy Ranchero is the current president of the um, uh, Filipino American Association of South DuPage, which is uh, sometimes commonly pronounced as Pasad, uh, F A A S D, and uh, and Joy uh, was uh, re just recently inaugurated. Well, Joy, um, we attended the inaugural ball. Um, and uh, Miss Joy, I invited Miss Joy Ranchero today uh, to help us uh, um, know about this uh, organization of many prominent Filipino, um, Filipino American members from South the Page. Hi, Joy. Welcome to our show. And um, thank you. Okay. Thank you for having me. Okay, and uh, Joy is a practicing uh, nurse. Uh, where where do you work uh, as a nurse, uh, Joy? Actually, I am a retired nurse oh. since 2016. 
but continue to be active with the mission work uh, with the Diocese of Joliet partnership and mission. So, so to say, I'm still actively practicing nursing, but with the mission. With a mission. It's very interesting, of uh, 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 Nursing with a mission. Uh, uh, some kind of a religious mission or what kind of a mission? Yes, yes. Uh, with the Diocese of Joliet here in um, the western suburbs, this is a Catholic uh, mission, actually. And we have... Uh, mission centers in the Philippines, which I go most of the time every year, except during COVID time. We have mission center in Bolivia and also in Uganda, Africa, which I had been in 2017. So was that some kind of a medical mission when you go to those countries? Actually, it's a combination. There are four segments of the mission work. There's the medical and surgical team. There's the outreach team. We have construction team and the dental team. So those comprises the mission. And um, the missionaries come from different parts of the world. You know, the doctors, the dentists, the nurses, anesthesiologists. And there's usually about 50 plus people who goes to this mission. Um, we also have a university student mission, which uh, primarily go to the Philippines uh, in Bacolod City, building houses for the very, very poor uh, Filipinos every year very interesting what you're doing is uh, really uh, very interesting serving uh, various people in uh, uh, different countries and uh, do you have to do that every year every year yes um especially in the philippines but you know if i have more time then i go to the other centers like I'm planning to go, after I come back from the Philippines this year, I'm planning to go to Bolivia to oh. join the mission there, yes. You, you'll you be doing that um, maybe sometime in the summertime? Do you travel in summer? Um, for the Philippine mission, uh, it starts uh, January 27 to February 10. But then I have other mission work there that are not connected with the diocese, like the Franciscan missions in Cebu and Dabao. And um, yearly, usually in May, um, is the Bolivian mission. And right now we're currently putting together a team for the Uganda mission, which usually goes in October. Joy, I salute you for what you're doing for all those these missions uh, as a medical missionary uh, throughout the world. I would say, I would say throughout the world, and uh, because uh, it involves many uh, a few number of countries. Um, okay, congratulations for what you're doing. Okay, let's go back. Go back to the organization of Assad. Uh, okay. As the current president of Assad or the Filipino American Association of South of Page, uh, well, can you please tell us about this organization briefly? Okay. Um, the Filipino American Association of South of Page. Uh, most commonly known to the community as the Fasad Organization. It's the, it was started in 1985, so that's like, the, this year is the 38th 30th year anniversary. Uh, it was started as a small community of friends, actually. Um, these are like, 
Filipinos who first immigrated there, like I would say first um, immig immigration of Filipinos here in this community, mm -hmm. which, you know, share the sentiments mm -hmm. of belonging, missing families at home, desiring to assimilate in the American culture, yet reserve their own valued heritage and traditions. Um, we are a group of diverse people who came from different ethnic provinces, of course, in the Philippines, but unite to support each other and take action when there is a need. And through our friendship, we become one family, which is the Fasad family. So, um, Many great presidents have uh, done so many great works through this organization. And um, actually I had my inauguration last year. I have accepted this position. I did not run for president, but I was volunteered by a very good friend of mine and as a favor to him, God bless him because he passed away already. So I took on the responsibility of um, leading this organization up to the present. This is my second year as president of uh, FASAD. And uh, let me just go back a little bit and see the summation from all the bylaws and the uh, past presidents. This is what I just saw. Uh, you know, in summation, the, sh the mission statement of this organization is really to promote awareness and appreciation of the rich Filipino American heritage, culture and traditions in various cultural activities, and also promote the integration and tolerance of others in our diverse community. So our main objectives are to like continue to foster friendship, camaraderie, and civic mindedness among the Filipino American families here in this community through support, education, scholarship, charity, and community service. And also to foster shared governance of the core leadership members officers and board of directors of each town and communities. And the third is the partnership with other like-minded organization in achieving our common goals. So I come up with this mimi about the facade organization as F, as in friendship, fellowship, I'm sorry, and family. A is for acceptance. A is for action, S is for support, and B is for diversity. So in summation, that is what facade is really all about, which has been fostered by so many, I'm like the 19th president. So, so many great people behind this organization who has achieved so many things in great things in service to the community, not only to the Filipino people, but as well as our own community, city where we live in, in participation to activities and volunteer activities and just really helping and support each other here in this community. Wonderful. You really have some very interesting and wonderful missions in that small organization. And uh, how many membership do you have uh, right now? Currently, we have as listed, you know, there are about 200, 250 members. Uh, back then, when this uh, organization, like I said, was started as a small community of friends, but it has grown up to like 2,000 members at some point of time, especially during the presidency of uh, 
Francis Manuel, which is 1992 and 1994. Like any you know, other organizations, you know, there are challenges, especially, you know, the past couple of years with COVID and and all of that. But Fasagos is a strong community. It's a vibrant organization and it has survived, you know, these challenges. And so we're still here and we're still trying to continue to fulfill our mission and to achieve our goals of service. Terrific. How, uh, how, uh, which, which uh, Western suburbs are involved with this organization? Uh, so we have, um, so I will be able to, we have Oakbrook, Hensdale, Clarendon Hills, Burridge, Westmont, Darien, um, Bolingbroke. Bowling, Bolingbroke is not quite within the vicinity of of. The, there are members that are like in the DuPage area of Bolingbroke, and we have also Woodridge and Downers Grove. Those are the main cities that are you know, included in the, the facade. But if there are people who would like express the, the interest in joining, I have opened it to, you know, everybody because, you know, it is Filipinos after all that we try to put together. So nobody is, um, everybody is welcome, I would say, if they have interest to join the organization. Very good, Joy, and uh, oh, I really commend you and congratulate you for what you're doing for the uh, for the community that involves your profession and also as a community member. Uh, and what else uh, do you have to say about yourself before we sign off? Oh, about well, myself. Oh, like I said, I had been a nurse, a registered nurse when I came here. Uh, this year, coming up 2023, will be our golden jubilee. So that means being a nurse for 50 years by then. But this is my thing, is retiring is not a license to stop serving. So as soon as I retired in 2016, I joined the mission right away because, because you know, I, I want to have to continue a purpose in my life. And so part of that is volunteering. Um, I have a few volunteer works. I'm very active in the, in the church ministry. I'm also a volunteer in the Catholic ministry called Upper Room which is uh, crisis and suicide intervention call line, which serves, you know, clients almost all over the world. We've been getting calls, you know, for um, intervention referrals, so to say. And of course, being a grandmother is a mission too. I have two grandsons, one is 10 years old, and the other one is two and a half, which is kind of a challenging task to babysit, you know, sometimes. And so just keeping active is my goal in service and in, in, in gratitude. So FASAD members currently from the start that I took the presidency of this organization, I would say, we have accumulated like almost 300 hours of volunteer work. We have volunteer in uh, Feed My Starving Children, Packing Foods, Northern Illinois Food Bank, and also as well as other communities that needs volunteering. You know, I have this in mind, in my vision, 
that now this time in the facade um organization most of us are all retired and so there is a pool of volunteer workers that you just need to tap and then you know so i i like to empower continue empowering the members of this organization okay. through these volunteers and they like it because they said that it's you know just sitting down at home and doing nothing so they feel the purpose they, they feel that they're still useful in the community so i have great response from members and even not members just trying to join our volunteer work you know once twice a month and also with our main fundraising events are only you know the gala every year and so with money we raised uh, the past year we were able to assist all the victims of the typhoon and the philippines in areas like Bacolod, Sorigao, and Southern Liti. We have, with, with the funds that we were able to contribute and partner with the missionaries in the Philippines, we were able to provide roofing, you know, when they are rebuilding their houses, like at least 10, 10 uh, what do you call that? Galvanized iron pieces to use as roofing in their communities. Also medical missions by the missionaries, food, shelter, and emergency necessities we have provided uh, as soon as, you know, a week after the typhoon and distribute like five kilos of rice to its community. And so we want to continue this this work because this is there is always so much need for our kababayan in the philippines every after disaster you know that happens so that's my vision that's what i am trying to accomplish with this organization building up on you know the great many works of past presidents of this organization. I see when I first took in the job, I said, I don't know if I can fill in their shoes because they have very big shoes and I have very small feet. So, you know, all I do is try my best and that's all I can say, just doing my best. Wow, terrific joy. Uh you, really, it's so nice talking to you. Such an empowered woman and doing a lot of humanitarian and philanthropic work with your medical missions. Uh, and also at the same time, taking care of your grandchildren. Wow, where do you find time? <laughs> I know, right? A lot of people ask me that, but somehow... You know, it's, it happens, you know, but be, before we end, I would really like to acknowledge and recognize sure. the core members, the officers no. of this organization, because they have really worked so hard with me, you know, to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. So it's not basically me. It's about all the people, all the officers, board of directors, and members of their organ of this organization that makes things happen. So, you know, I thank them and I, you know, all I do is just kind of throw things in there, get their ideas, and then we come up with our projects, how we're gonna do about it. And as you have probably witnessed, we have successful events last year and this year because of the great cooperation of all these officers and members and board of directors of this organization. So 
thank you. I salute them. And, you know, I couldn't ask for anything more, you know, than that from them. They were awesome. Great. Uh, you are also an awesome person. And uh, I thank you for gracing our show today, Joy. And uh, and uh, wish you good luck. And congratulations to all what you're doing. Um, anytime you would meet us, uh, our media, the Project Time CPR TV, just give us a call. I'm so proud to have you today. And uh, once again, thank you for gracing our show and enjoy the holidays. Thank you so much for having me and uh, have a wonderful holidays, Christmas, New Year, if I don't get to talk to you or see you. But yes. we'll see you soon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Bye. U.S. Med, a trusted supplier of diabetes equipment for nearly 30 years, has great news for people living with diabetes and the pain of regular testing. The days of repeated, painful finger sticks are over. Now you can wear a continuous glucose monitor or CGM and eliminate routine finger sticks. If you use insulin daily to manage your condition, a continuous glucose monitor could help you control your diabetes and reduce or eliminate those painful finger sticks. If you have Medicare or private insurance, US Med can deliver a CGM system right to your door. And if you qualify, there may be little or no cost to you. Shipping is free and we'll even bill your insurer directly. Don't spend one more painful day testing your blood sugar. Call now to get your continuous glucose monitoring system so you can take control of your diabetes and get back to enjoying life. Call US Med now. I'm sure has been on the road pretty early this morning yeah. trying to uh, invite all of you to please please vote for him we need a new mayor of Chicago and I've interviewed this man before and he's very very close to the Filipino American community so doc welcome back to the show Chicago Philippine reports TV so um, before you weren't running and now you are what do you have a uh, plan for the city of Chicago that we know will benefit our residents well, and the, you know. Well, well, today I'm not running for mayor at the moment. I'm, I'm doing the foundation for Thanksgiving. Oh, you are, uh -huh. okay. So okay. as we are doing a non-for-profit for Thanksgiving, this is the time of, uh, of giving and being grateful. Yes, it is. And after this time here, then later on we'll be back out uh, on the trail uh, tomorrow and next day, but today we, set aside this year for what the Lord have blessed us for the whole year. And so we got 20 some service stations today. We have about 12 uh, grocery places okay. and seafood city here. Yes. And uh, we just been able to uh, come out and help mm -hmm. and want to continue to do this. You know what? I apologize and no, I'm touched no actually. Uh -huh. And that's really uh, heartwarming to hear, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, somebody, you know, who is running later on yeah, that yeah, today yeah. Mm -hmm. is here to give thanks and of course to share what he has to the people who need it i mean that gift card will go a long way to, yeah mm -hmm. you know some unfortunate families who probably cannot afford a proper oh, yeah. thanksgiving so oh, yeah. you know from the bottom of our hearts we thank you thank that's you. really uh, touching so that just shows you the kind of person he is and for that Thank you so much, Dr. Wilson. And you Thank know, you. please, please, after Thanksgiving, yeah. keep him in mind. We do need a new mayor, so here I go back uh, <laughs> campaigning for you. And uh, we'd love to see you again sometime, you know. Yeah, um, it will. The holidays coming up for Christmas. Okay. Coming up, you got New Year's coming up. 
and uh, people, they food prices, as you know, are 20 yes. to 30 oh percent higher. Yeah. Uh, and we want to get out here and share some of the uh, blessing that the Lord has given us. And just a reminder, he used to give away free gas, remember that? And now it's free food. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Do yeah, your, free um, gas. We're well, actually doing that today. Yes. We got uh, 20 or some service days today of free gas. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah. so there you have it. <laughs> Please remember Dr. Wilson all the way. All I'm Maria right. Gurley Pascual. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you back here in studio. But I'm in right. Salamat. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome back. We are here at Seafood City with none other than the crew behind uh, our soon-to-be mayor, Wilson, Dr. Wilson. And I have the pleasure of seeing again Commissioner uh, Boykin, who's also here supporting uh, uh, Doc Wilson. Yeah. And we have our store manager, Saul. I'm Saul. I'm the store yeah. manager of Seafood City Supermarket. And of welcome, course, everyone. Well, welcome. And we have the beautiful Jennifer. <laughs> Jocelyn, 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 Jocelyn. I helped coordinate the, uh, the the grocery giveaway for specifically for the Filipino community here at Seafood City. Yes, yes. yes. And, uh, this I is just, our third time here, by third the way. Time. <laughs> yes, yes, I, third know, time. I know we missed the two yes. times because Veronica was here. Yes, yes. yes. So I'm happy to see all of you. Happy yes. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Happy holidays. Yes. yes, happy holidays. So let's start with you, Commissioner. Uh, what do you see? You know, I know we're doing the Thanksgiving show. That's what Dr. Wilson said. But apart from that, uh, what do you guys hope to uh, tell the Chicago people who are here today? Look, I want to thank Dr. Wilson for his generosity through his foundation. I want to thank uh, Mr. Rabaya. I want to thank Sol and Jocelyn Nieder for organizing this important activity. Look, uh, the need is great. We saw so many people in line who actually need help. Uh, with food, with costs rising due to inflation, gasoline prices going up. Dr. Wilson wanted to do something to help people for Thanksgiving. Look, we did 21 gas stations today where people wow. got $50 in free gas, and we did six grocery stores oh today, goodness. and so where people and got And I'm sure you're not done. It's we're not early done. in the day. Yeah, we got more work to do, uh -huh. but the good news is, is that we love seafood city yes. we love the filipino people and we're so excited to be a part of this and the filipino people yes. love you. Yes. Yes. Right. and uh, manager salt yeah. what do you have to say to the people who are here today yeah we are thankful for those who come in as early as 6 30 even if it's cold yeah. they come here to see dr wilson's generosity and we're very thankful and we always appreciate the help of dr Willow wilson's group welcome don't to seafood forget. city yeah, dr. Yeah. Wilson. Jocelyn, any I, words for uh, the people yes. in here today? Uh, well, I'm just really glad that Dr. Willie Wilson has uh, brought these blessings uh, three times in a row the last three months. Um, and being a part of it, being born in the Philippines, uh, you know, being able to see my people um, take advantage of, you know, the blessings. Yes. Um, this is actually my ninth month uh, with oh, Dr. Willie wow. Wilson's foundation and a pure Pinay uh, to represent, so we're hoping to be back again here, so, yeah. Well, I thank, thank you all. Uh, I know it's a, uh, you know, short interview, but I do yes. hope to see you back in front of uh, yes. the camera for Chicago for sure. Philippine Reports TV, longest running uh, Filipino wow. American show yeah and care of veronica layton so yes. thank you so much again happy thanksgiving if happy i don't thanksgiving see all of you yeah. love yeah. to dr wilson yes. go out and vote after thanksgiving guys and to seafood city yes. maraming yes. salamat yes. commissioner boykin maraming salamat mabuhay filipinas mabuhay filipinas mabuhay si dr wilson yes. i'm maria gurley pascual we'll see you back in studio maraming salamat po thank you thank you Good morning! Welcome back to Seafood City. I have with me Saul and her group of volunteers for today. We'd like to remind you, uh, Seafood City and Dr. Willie Wilson has generously donated $25 gift cards for the people for Thanksgiving. And he gave us a beautiful Thanksgiving message for which, you know, we as Filipino Americans are grateful for. So, Sol, ano masasabi natin today? Yeah, we're very thankful for those who come today. This morning it's very cold, but you're still here. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you so much for the support, and you are always welcome at Seafood City. Seafood City is where you're home away from home. 
Tama. Yan. Kung nagtataka kayo kung sino yung mga nasa paligid ko, itong ating magaganda at mga gwapong kababayan na magagaling sumayaw. Yes! Magagaling mag-volunteer. Yes! At parating masaya. Yes! <laughs> so what do we say? Mabuhay, Dr. Willie Wilson! Mabuhay, Seafood City! At huwag nyo kaming kalimutan, Mabuhay, CPR TV! Mabuhay, Duncan Group! And Dan Dance Lover Club! Ang dami ng And so there you have it. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody, and be safe. Enjoy your families. Enjoy the blessings that God has yeah, given you. Me. Thank you, thank you. Happy we'll see you back in studio. Maraming okay, salamat po. We would like to welcome all of you to Baladna Jewelry. We have a very big selection of 21 karat gold jewelry imported from the Middle East, from Dubai, Saudi, and Bahrain. And we have a very big selection of diamond. We offer free financing for six months, and uh, we have a layaway system which you can leave your stuff for three months. We repair gold and we buy old gold. Welcome to Baladna Jewelry. Salamat Bo. Hello, good day, CPR TV viewers. Uh, this is Pastor Ed from uh, Faith Family Worship Center, Chicago, Illinois, coming to you with our devotion for uh, this month, uh, for uh, our Thanksgiving celebration. And for our devotion, I just chose Psalm 100. And there are only five passages here, but they are very powerful, very uplifting, and very encouraging. And I'll start with verse 1. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. And then verse 4 and 5. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. This is such a beautiful psalm, uh, a great meditation for us during this Thanksgiving month, uh, especially uh, when we celebrate uh, Thanksgiving Day at uh, the last uh, Thursday of this month. And it starts off with a very joyful, upbeat uh, words of worship. And this, this, this psalm encourages us to, to shout, you know, be, be loud and be noisy and, and just be uh, uh, ecstatic about our worship uh, to the God who made us, who created us, and we, who poured out so much blessings unto us. So he said, shout for joy, worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. And, you know, when you start to realize how much God has blessed us, yes, uh, there is an economic downturn and there's, uh, there are so many pressures in this life. And, you know, we just had the, um, the pandemic uh, the last uh, couple of years and it's still ongoing. People are still getting sick. And, and perhaps you're asking the question, what is there to thank God for? Well, first of all, you're, you're, you're listening to this um, devotion, <laughs> and, and we are alive, and we are breathing. And thank God that uh, He has given us another day, another month uh, to live for Him and for His glory. We only have a couple more months left uh, for this year, 2022. And the Lord willing, uh, we will welcome the year 2023 soon. And so there is reason for celebration there is there is reason for rejoicing and then verse 3 it says know that the lord is god it is he who made us and we are his we are his people the sheep of his pasture and so why why do we why are we rejoicing and why are we being joyful it's because the lord is god he sits on the throne uh he's 
he's still the king of kings and the lord of lords and under everything is under his control and he's not uh, walking about and just pacing the floor and, and wringing his hands and, and don't know what to do no he still sits on the throne uh, Psalm 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. And then it says in verse 3, It is He who made us, and we are His, and we are His people, people, the sheep of His pasture. Uh, you know, this pictures God as a shepherd who compassionately and tenderly cares for us. And, you know, He has provided so much for us, and He has protected us and, and healed us from so many sicknesses and diseases and you know he deserves our worship he deserves our praise because like a shepherd he takes care of our needs and and this reminds me of what david said in psalm 23 verse 1 he said the lord is my shepherd and i shall not want and then verse 4 it says enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise give thanks to him and praise his name. So you'll see uh, the word thanksgiving is reiterated uh, not just uh, once, but but twice. And you know it's it's important to approach God with a grateful heart. You know, especially as we celebrate Thanksgiving this this month. Uh, you know, let's let's give glory to Him. Let's give thanks to Him uh, because of what He has done and what He continues to do for us. For our families for our children and he has blessed us with with jobs and, and health and uh, you know you name it daily provisions food on the table a, a roof over our head those are things that we need to be grateful for and then verse 5 the last verse says for the lord is good and his love endures forever his faithfulness continues through all generations this is the unchanging character of God. We worship God not only for what He has done for us or what He has given us, but we worship Him for who He is, that He is good, that His love endures forever, and that His faithfulness continues through all generations. That's the kind of God that we serve. That's the kind of God that we have. And so I pray that you will come to know this God, this loving faithful God through a personal relationship with his son Jesus you know Jesus died for you on the cross so that you may be reconciled back to the father and all we have to do is to trust in in what Jesus has done for us at the cross dying for our sins and forgiving us from all of our sins the moment we we come to him and we confess our sins and we repent and we accept him by faith that he is our savior and that he is our lord and that's when we uh, obtain a, a good and right relationship with god so god bless you my brothers and sisters friends psalm 100 this is a thanksgiving song and and look at it again and, and read through this these five passages they will bless you and they will redirect your thoughts to the creator of all things the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the all-powerful, all-knowing, all-present God. And that's, that's the object of our thanksgiving. God bless you, and until next time. Do you need to get your hands on some extra money right now? Maybe 25000 or more? If you're a homeowner, now is a perfect time to get cash out, while homes in many neighborhoods like yours have gone up in value. You can use the money for anything. It's yours. You can buy an investment property, pay for college, pay off higher interest debt, or make home improvements. A cash out refinance is the perfect solution to get the cash you need. If you need 25,000, 50,000, or even 100,000, now's the time. Home values are up and so is your equity. We offer you a way to use it. No need to sell your home or use your savings. Call New American Funding now and speak to a cash out refi specialist and see how much cash out you can get. Call New American Funding at 855. 855- 332-3929. That's 855-332-3929. Call 855-332-3929.
Good afternoon, this is Bridget Carino Quadar bringing you this week's local news from our community. The Central Rizal of the Philippine Embassy in Washington, D.C. donated Philippine history books to the Library of Congress in conjunction with the celebration of the 88th National Book Week on November 24th through the 30th, 2022, in the Philippines. Charge d'affaires Jaime Ramon Ascalon Jr on behalf of Ambassador Jose Manuel Romualdez and the Philippine Embassy donated the following books to the Library of Congress. We are honored to have more literature and references about the Philippines in the collection of the Library of Congress. The Philippine Embassy and its central Rizal hopes that these books will cultivate a better understanding of Philippine history and heritage, as well as develop our people-to-people -people ties as the American public can find more information related to the Philippines. I also thank the National Historical Commission of the Philippines NHCP for making this donation possible, says Ambassador Jose Manuel Romualdez. Secretary of State Jesse White announced that Secretary of State Police will be conducting parking stings at shopping malls statewide throughout the holiday season and ticketing individuals who illegally park in spaces reserved for persons with disabilities. Secretary of State Police will enforce the provisions of the parking program for persons with disabilities at shopping centers on Black Friday in Chicago, Fairview Heights, Peoria, Rockford, Schaumburg, and Springfield as it marks the unofficial start of the holiday shopping season. Secretary of State Police will also be enforcing the program in other areas of the state throughout the holiday season. Drivers caught misusing a placard face a six-month driver's license suspension and a $600 fine. Repeat violators will face a one-year driver's license suspension and a $750 fine for a second offense. For third or subsequent offenses, violators will face a $1,000 fine plus a one-year driver's license revocation. The fine for parking in an accessible parking space without a disability placard or disability license plates can be up to $350. Using a deceased person's placard or a fraudulent placard can result in $2,500 fines and one-year revocation of a driver's license. The Illinois Assistance Commission, the state's college access and financial aid agency, is pleased to announce the 2023 to 2024 Illinois State Scholars. These high-achieving students are selected annually based on their ACT or SAT exams and six-semester class rank and are recognized for their exceptional academic achievements. The scholars rank in approximately the top 10% of graduates from Illinois high schools. More than 16,770 students from 690 high schools were selected for this prestigious honor. On behalf of ISAC, congratulations to all of the outstanding students selected as 2023-2024 Illinois State Scholars, the ISAC Executive Director Eric Zarnico said. Students and families faced numerous challenges over the last two years with remote learning, among other financial and personal difficulties. As we continue to recover from the pandemic, these academic achievements are a credit to the hard work and dedication to the student scholars and their families and to support provided by teachers, mentors, counselors, and communities in helping students meet their goals and find success as they advance on their education and career paths. Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle announced a $5.5 million in funding today for the Electric Vehicle Charging Stations Program, an initiative led by the county's Department of Environment and Sustainability and Bureau of Asset Management to increase the number and access to public electric vehicle, EV, charging stations throughout suburban Cook County. There are large gaps in access to public EV charging stations throughout the suburbs of Cook County, specifically in traditionally underserved communities on the south and west sides, said President Preckwinkle. Bridging these gaps in access to provide more residents the opportunity to consider the economic benefits of electric vehicle ownership. 
The goal of this four-year initiative is to install up to 75 dual-port public EV charging stations. With many families planning to gather for Christmas, the Illinois Department of Public Health is urging Illinoisans to celebrate the holiday safely by taking precautions to protect vulnerable family members from COVID-19 and the flu, and to pay close attention to food safety. In addition to being fully vaccinated and boosted for COVID-19 and the flu, IDPH encourages the public to get tested before attending holiday gatherings, especially if you'll be visiting someone at high risk for severe COVID-19, to stay home if you are sick, and practice good hand hygiene. In addition, holiday hosts are urged to ensure gatherings are well ventilated and to follow food safety guidelines in handling hot and cold foods to prevent foodborne illness. These safety reminders come as the CDC reported 21 Illinois counties were at an elevated community level for COVID-19 as of November 18th. IDPH is reporting 14,388 new confirmed and probable cases of COVID-19 in Illinois and 59 deaths since November 16th. And as respiratory illnesses such as RSV, the flu, and COVID-19 are continuing to lead in illnesses and hospitalizations, there are a number of strategies that will keep us all healthy and safe. That's all for today. Thank you for watching our news this week. This is Bridget. See you next time. And that's our show for today. Thank you all for watching Chicago Philippine Reports TV. We hope you will stay safe and enjoying this day with your family and friends. I'm Maria Gurley Pascual. Maraming salamat sa inyong pagsubaybay and we'll see you back here next week.